Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Roadhouse, and do you know that a teaspoon of gluten, if you have the gluten gene or the gluten sensitivity, can cause brain inflammation that lasts up to 30 days? Do you know that if you have the gluten gene or gluten sensitivity, that if you eat gluten, it can decrease the blood supply to certain parts of your brain by 30 to 40%? A lot of the patients that come in with a neurological problem or a thyroid problem could have metabolic components, which is the functional medicine portion of our program. But it's also important to address the neurological portion of it. And the reason we do that is just what I got done saying, is that your brain needs two things to survive, fuel and activation. Fuel comes in the form of oxygen, and as we get older, our brain doesn't utilize oxygen as well, and glucose from the food, so you have to have a good diet. Those nourish the brain. They make the brain work properly. The second thing they need is activation. You've heard the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's the brain. If you don't use it, you lose it. So. If you have a problem with gluten, gluten comes on insidiously. You might not even know about it. But let's say that you haven't been tested. You're eating gluten. <clears throat> Every day you do that, that increases, increases inflammation. Look at your hands. Look at your face. Are they puffy? That's inflammation. <clears throat> so when these patients come in, we have to evaluate them neurologically. Because the way the brain works, the scientists have found there's a brain loop that starts with the cerebellum, which is back here in the back part of your brain. And when you come up with an idea or an action, the cerebellum is like the quarterback and it makes everything happen. It initiates the play and then the rest of the, the team has to do the work, which is that particular part of the brain that accomplishes that action. So when you have a, a signal that's going from this part of the brain to this part of the brain over here, and you have a decrease in blood supply there, it's not going to get through. And if it stays there long enough, <clears throat> that part isn't going to work right. Now, the study that I'm talking about, they took <clears throat> two groups of individuals, and they did the lab tests on the C, if they had any gluten sensitivities or the gluten gene. So they had divide them in two groups. One group that had the gluten gene and sensitivity, and then the other group that didn't. They did a, a baseline brain <clears throat> scan on them that showed the blood flow. <clears throat> and they had them on a gluten-free diet for two weeks. Then they did the baseline exam on them. They had normal blood flow to the brain. So then what they did is they gave both groups a gluten diet to eat over the next couple of weeks. They brought both groups back in. They did the brain scan. The group over here that ate the gluten, that didn't have the gluten gene or the gluten sensitivity, their brain scans were normal, identical to what they were when they did the baseline exam on them. The other group that had the gluten gene, gluten sensitivity, when they did the uh, repeat scan, they found areas of the brain that had a decrease in blood supply of 30 to 40 percent. So what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that gluten can affect the brain. So if it's not working properly, when you come in, part of our neurological examinations, we're going to identify if there's any problem with any of the lobes. Now we know when we do the exam, what part of the brain, what look part of the lobe it is, or the brain stem, <clears throat> we know what it's supposed to do. So if it doesn't do it, there are activations, brain activations that we do to start working that part of the brain again. We put patients on oxygen because it supercharges the brain when we're doing that. We do them in the office here. And then the thing about neuroplasticity, creating new pathways, new brain cells is you have to do the repetition. So we give you homework, maybe takes a couple minutes, a couple times a day to do these really <clears throat> simple activities. 
and that restores the brain function. So if you have a chronic health problem and you have some dizziness, maybe some memory, some sleep issues, and you have a whole host of other problems, part of your problem is going to be neurological. So give us a call at 918-481-2770. Come in, let's do the examination and consultation at no charge, and let's see if you have any neurological involvement. If you do, I'll let you know whether we can fix or not and get you back to feeling good again. Thank you.